welcome again to OAF one on one. Uh, this is Knowledge Area One. I am your co instructor, Kulwa Mangana, an assistant lecturer from the Faculty of Business Management and Accounting. And uh, this is uh, Principles of Accounting, as we have said. An introductory part, we're going to take at least uh, 15 minutes to go through this one. Uh, basically, we're going to look into accounting in itself uh, and uh, bookkeeping. We are also going to look at the difference between book accounting and bookkeeping. And uh, we will look at some of the principles in accounting. Uh, then uh, at least in the end, we'll be able to have a clear picture what accounting it is. Now to start with, uh, let us see the meaning of accounting. Uh, accounting has been in, being defined by so many scholars, but uh, let us use this definition, which is very, very simple. It is uh, accounting is the process of identifying, uh, measuring, and communicating the economic information of an organization to various users who need the information for decision making. And if you go through this definition, I'll repeat it again. The terms that we are going to look, look at are uh, one, we are saying accounting is the process of identifying, uh, measuring, and communicating the economic information of an organization to various users who need the information for decision making. We're going to analyze these uh, terms, some of the terms that I've been using, I've been using this uh, definition. But actually, uh, from the definition, you can uh, find activities that are involved in accounting. Now, these activities are one, there's an activity of recording, an activity of classifying, summarizing, analyzing, interpreting, and communicating these. Uh, transaction or events uh, to parties that need financial information. Now you see, uh, if you look at this definition again, you'll understand that we have users, uh, those people who will need to use this financial information. That's what we are saying uh, to various users who need the information for decision making. And then they, there is a purpose to this information, that they need this information for decision uh, for decision making. We're going to look at it in future when we look at the different users of financial information. Now, let us go back into bookkeeping. What do we mean by bookkeeping? Bookkeeping, it's that part of accounting which is uh, only uh, concerned with the recording of a business transaction on a day-to-day -day basis or maintenance of books of accounts. Now, the nature of a bookkeeper, it's more for critical work, uh, but today with, our, uh, with the emergence of technology, uh, uh, we have electronic equipment that uh, may assist into the art of recording. That's why we have the PS, uh, of, uh, POS machines that uh, you may you, that you may find them in the supermarkets and other sales outlet uh, um, sales outlet uh, spaces. Now, bookkeeping it only covers the first four activities of the accounting process. Uh, those activities that I've mentioned, we have the uh, recording, classifying, summarizing, analyzing, interpreting. Uh, and communicating this financial information now those uh, four parts are being covered uh, under bookkeeping now if you want to compare uh, between uh, bookkeeping and accounting uh, let us first uh, see the similarities between these two now similarities and differences between bookkeeping and accounting lies in the following grounds one uh, we are going to look uh, uh, into the scope stage uh, basic objective nature knowledge and supervision now i'm going to uh, I'm going to explain in a very nutshell. Uh, first, if we look at the scope, uh, when you, uh, you look into bookkeeping, it's very narrow. Uh, scope, the scope of bookkeeping is very narrow. You only deal uh, only with that part of recording the accounting transaction. But the accounting itself, it's broader in scope because um, it goes beyond into analyzing and communicating the financial information to different users who need this financial information. And you see, that's a difference. It marks a difference between the two. But again, the stages, the stages that have been used in accounting are different to those in bookkeeping. Uh, we only go into only four stages to account for bookkeeping, and then the rest, the other remaining stages, it account for, for the accounting. The objective behind uh, our, our bookkeeping is only to record those financial uh, information is, is only to mark into recording, but the objective behind uh, the fine accounting itself it goes beyond into analyzing and uh, coming up with interpretation to these financial uh, financial statements. Now, the nature of the job, the nature of the uh, uh, job, and uh, we have said the accounting uh, it's more of critical work, uh, but uh, with uh, uh, with uh, no, 
the nature of the job, we have said that the bookkeeping is more of credit work, uh, but uh, the accountant goes beyond that into analyzing and interpretation. So it's, uh, it's more of an analysis and not of uh, credit work into, that falls into recording uh, of this transaction. And lastly, the supervision and checking. Now this uh, comes across uh, uh, we, when we, when we uh, with the bookkeeper and accountant, you see, an accountant is the one who is going to check uh, into the work of a bookkeeper. So an accountant is going to supervise the work of a bookkeeper. So you, we expect bookkeepers, uh, or the other bookkeeping is going to be supervised by the existence of uh, an accountant. Now the other part is the users of accounting. From the definition, we, now we know that we are going to have users. Uh, we have a number of users who are going to use this accounting information. Uh, to mention them a few, we have lenders, uh, we have owners, uh, we have suppliers, employers, and management in itself. Now, every user uh, in this um, financial statement uh, is going to look at uh, different information that he intends to use for decision making. Now, let us see the lenders or creditors. Uh, the lenders or creditors will need this for information, or will use the accounting information to assess the credibility of the borrowers. I repeat, the lenders or creditors will use, will use the accounting information to assess the credibility of the borrowers. Again, we have the owners. Uh, the owners are uh, the owners are going to uh, need the information to assess the prospect of their investment because the owners are the ones who have subjected their money uh, into uh, the company or the organization. So they, so they will need to look at the financial information to see uh, the prospect of the investment. Again, we have suppliers uh, who will need this information to assess uh, or to access if uh, and their customers can be able to or they can afford to pay the obligation on time. And then we have the employees uh, who will use this financial information to check uh, if the company is uh, operating profitably so that they be, the company can be able to pay off the uh, salaries and some of the uh, some of the some of their welfare uh, because uh, because employees depends on uh, depends on the profitability of the company to be able to run it smoothly so that they'll know our company is uh, credible okay so that they will know that our company is able to pay us our salaries when they fold you. But again, the management, they'll need information to review the firm's short-term and long-term solvents. So at that point, at least you, you can uh, see how important uh, the accounting is uh, it is uh, to different users. Now in recording, as I've said in Knowledge Area 1, it's uh, only an introductory part, then I will, we will need to understand some of the assumptions that are going to be are needed when recording these uh, accounting accounting information. Uh, these are the pillars under which the foundation of accounting lies. The including uh, one is the business entity, the second is the money measurement, the third is the going concern, and the accounting period. Now to start, let us uh, look at the uh, business entity. Business entity, uh, this assumption has shown uh, that uh, business uh, is separate from the owners. That's what we're saying, business entity. The activities of a business should be separated from the activities of the, of the owner. That a business should operate differently. And again, money measurement, those uh, transactions that uh, will account into a business are supposed to be accounted in monetary terms. That, that, that is why we are saying uh, money measurement. We are going to measure only a transaction in monetary terms. Going concern, another uh, assumption is that uh, we assume that the, 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 the business or the company uh, will operate in some for a seeable future time. We don't expect that, that the company will run for two months or three months. We expect it to run for more than 12 months. Uh, they, this goes uh, hand in hand with the accounting period uh, assumption that we assume that um, um, we're going to record transaction within the, the period that we run to 12 months. The accounting period here is that it will run uh, between uh, or in between uh, the period of only 12 months. It may uh, be from January to to December, or you might even decide whatever the case, but uh, we're going to account for for transaction under the period of 12, of 12, of 12 months. Now the basic principles, uh, uh, these are the essential, essential the general uh, decision rules, which govern the development of accounting technique. I'm going only to mention some of them. These include duality principles, uh, matching principle, accrual principle, materiality, consistency, historical cost principles, and prudence. As you can see in these slides, I've tried to analyze them. I've only mentioned them 
uh, and I'm going to explain them. You are the principles uh, here. It calls for double entry, whereby the every debit entry should have a corresponding credit entry. And again, matching principles uh, uh, it requires that revenue should be matched with expenses, accrual principles, and materiality principles. Uh, materiality principles, uh, we, we are going to record only those transactions that are of material nature. Uh, a, big, a big company, for example, uh, I'm now here in Arusha. Let me take an example of a big company, let's say JSMO. Uh, you cannot record uh, a transaction of buying a pin. Uh, for example, a pin that has been bought of uh, maybe 100 shillings, then you, you said it is material to a, a very big company like GSM. So we are going only to record those transactions that have uh, a very huge amount, that are very material, that will affect uh, the, uh, the will affect the position of a company. Uh, historical cost score principles, uh, this calls for recording transactions at their historical cost, original costing of uh, that transaction. Uh, and prudence principle, it is an accounting principle that requires recording expenses and liabilities as soon as possible. I repeat, uh, an accounting principle that requires recording expenses and liabilities as soon as possible, but the revenues are only when they are realized or assured, also called conservatism principles. It is also called conservatism principles. Okay, now it is uh, an introductory part on Algeria 1. So I'm certain sure that at this point you are able to capture some of the things, some of the, some of the elemental concepts that will help you uh, into this journal of accounting, uh, into OF101, principle of accounting. Thank you for listening and be in touch.